The movie begins in Pennsylvania as an old man Milton walks towards Bontoon Town Hall to attend a city council meeting. The council talks about the various projects within the community that have been accomplished and those they are yet to start on. The meeting is now on the next part, which is to open public comments, and Milton is the first person to give a comment. Milton suggests they change their town slogan from a great place to call home to, a great place to refer to as home because he sees the town motto as a confusing one. He also suggests an additional crosswalk trending to his azaleas in the garden. Milton is back home and from what we observe. He stays alone in his house and has limited social interaction with people from the outside. Milton is also used to his daily routine of watering plants, watching TV, supplying his bird birth with food, etc. In the morning, his daughter Denise checks up on him and helps him cover his expenses and bills. While in the toilet, Denise finds a can of beans and thinks Milton is starting to experience memory lapses and believes. He needs a checkup, but Milton explains. He must have been distracted by something else by the time he left the kin there, and doesn't need a checkup. Denise then leaves for work. As Milton stays watching TV, in the middle of the night, Milton hears a loud bang in his compound and goes out to inspect his backyard. He is astonished on seeing a UFO that has crashed in his garden. He then immediately calls 911 and tells them about the spaceship that has crashed in his backyard, and also crashing his azaleas. The operator thinks he is making a prank of some sort and warns him of potential fines. Milton hangs up. He also tries to call his daughter Denise but only attends to a voicemail. Milton is up for another city council meeting and after another elderly village neighbor to Milton. Joyce speaks, it's time for Milton to speak. He reiterates the same issues as in the first meeting, that is to say, the issue of changing the town slogan, and also adding an additional crosswalk trending to his azaleas in the garden. At night, Milton again hears a clicking sound and wakes up to go and check. He finds an alien lying down. He again calls Denise but receives a voicemail, but this time just talks and says, Hi, Denise. I called you a few nights ago because a spaceship had crashed in my backyard, and now the spaceman has come out of the ship and is lying down and I'm scared. Once again, Milton is up for another city council meeting. After another elderly village neighbor to Milton, Sandy speaks, it's time for Milton to speak. Milton once again reiterates the same issues as in the previous meeting, that is to say, the issue of changing the town slogan and also adding an additional crosswalk trending to his azaleas in the garden but this time adds on that also a UFO has crashed in his backyard, taking out his azaleas plus also destroying his bird birth. One of the council superiors then asks back did you just say UFOs as Milton replies yes. The council is really confused and thinks Milton is not in his right mind. After the council meeting, Joyce tells Milton to stop this nonsense about UFOs and spaceships. As she thinks all this is a joke, she says, the village councils may take all of them for granted if one speaks joking words like that, but Milton assures her all he said was true about the spaceship. Sandy approaches Milton also and expresses concern about his well-being. Sandy then kindly offers to provide him a ride back home. Sandy drops Milton off at his house and also assures him she will drive him to places whenever he needs it. Milton also does not show the spaceship to Sandy on reaching home. Once Sandy leaves, Milton decides to check on the UFO and notices the alien has crawled out and is now on his patio, lying face down and inching toward his house. The alien raises its head, makes eye contact with Milton, and promptly passes out. He gives the alien a blanket to cover its body and leaves a glass of water near its hand. When the alien wakes up the next morning, it still feels weak and it's shivering while sitting on the ground by the back staircase, covered in a blanket. Milton asks him to come inside where it's warmer and more comfortable. By making a wide sweeping motion with his arm, Milton adds him water. Milton offers different foods to discover what the alien prefers. Of all the food Milton offers, the alien prefers only one item, the sliced apple. 
The alien has eaten only one apple and is still weak. Milton tells the alien to rest on the couch and watch TV, since he has to head out for groceries and also get more apples. When Milton is at the store, he stocks ten apples and tells the sales clerk that the apples are all for the alien. The sales clerk wonders if the alien Milton is referring to is an immigrant without papers. But Milton clarifies it's an alien from outer space who only eats apples. That evening, Milton sees the alien walking and responds, that's a good sign that you are walking. Milton then shows the alien around the house. That is to say, the bathroom, toilet, guest's bedroom, etc. He also teaches the alien how to change TV channels and also says he likes CSI programs a lot. He also showed him pictures of his family. They also watch the dance show on TV at 7 o'clock. Meanwhile, Denise visits the grocery store and is told by the sales clerk how her dad brought a bunch of apples from there and told him they are for an alien. Denise sees this as a strange behavior from his dad and thinks his dad might really be in a worse mental state. At this time, Denise is fed up so she visits her dad and makes him promise to go to a professional doctor to check his mental condition as his recent behavior concerns her. Milton responds that he will take some time to think about it. They talk for a while, and it's like as if Milton wants to tell Denise about the alien but later hesitates. Milton then asks if Denise received his voicemails and Denise responds no. Sandy calls Milton and wants to come to Milton's house to help her print some papers. Sandy then goes to Milton's house and almost passes out when she sees the alien sitting in the living room. Sandy asks Milton a bunch of questions as Milton explains to her about the alien, how he came and how long he has stayed in his house. Sandy later gets used to the situation and also warns Milton not to tell anyone any more about the alien as it may attract the government's attention. We are then taken to an underground government FBI facility. Meanwhile, Milton falls asleep on the sofa. When he wakes up in the morning, he notices the alien has covered him with a blanket. The alien also leaves Milton an artwork, a cartoon cat's face. He sees the alien in the backyard diligently repairing his spacecraft. Milton expresses his appreciation for the artwork. Denise organizes for her dad's mental checkup and Milton is asked a variety of questions, confirming whether he has mental issues. Meanwhile, Sandy tells the alien about her lesbian daughter and also inquires whether the alien planet has also got that type of love, the lesbian love, but the alien does not respond. Milton is also asked about the words he said regarding an alien and a spaceship and he denies, everything saying it was a joke. Milton leaves the checkup meeting and goes back home. In the morning, Milton explains to the alien and says her daughter Denise thinks he is losing it and wants to put him in a home for the mentally unstable people. Milton also says he has not spoken to his son for many years and also confesses. He has not always been a good dad to his son. Milton also calls his son Tim and confesses to him. He has not been a good dad all along but wants Tim to forgive him. In the morning, Sandy dresses up the alien. Sandy also gave him a name, Jules. Joyce is watching news on TV when she listens to a news reporter saying, the government is seeking public help in search of parts of a satellite that they say fell out of the sky. Near the Pennsylvania and Ohio, the government will offer a reward of $10,000 to anyone with the information about the crashed apparatus. Joyce then remembers. Milton talked about some alien stuff and Joyce immediately goes to spy on Milton. Joyce also sees the alien seated with Milton and Sandy on the dining table. Joyce goes to Milton's house, joins them as Milton questions her on why she was spying on them. Joyce admires the alien's eyes and wants to touch them, but Milton tells her not to. Milton and Sandy urge Joyce to keep the alien a secret. Milton shows them the artwork that the alien handed him, full of cat drawings. Joyce says she thinks it may be some sort of signal the alien is sending. The scene shifts to the underground government FBI facility, 
where multiple agents actively listen to phone conversations and follow up quickly on any references to spaceships or alien encounters. Officials then visit all the alleged houses for the corresponding spaceship and alien conversations, and check them to find any alien or any spaceship but to no avail. Joyce has brought some apples and a new shirt for the alien. Joyce also converses with the alien for a while. Meanwhile, Sandy has started up a program of the young conversing with the elderly such as herself. It's an experiment she's trying out where young people can come to meet old people and take a dip in their pool of wisdom and experience. She gets her first client, Danny, and they start to converse. We later observe that Danny came with other intentions of stealing jewelry and killing Sandy. Danny then fights to kill Sandy and take all her reaches. On the other side, Joyce is singing for Jules and Milton. As Jules is having a live vision of what's happening far away at Sandy's home, Jules observes that Sandy is in danger and is about to be killed by Danny. Jules then uses his powers to burst Danny's head from a distance and Danny dies. The police then asks Sandy on Danny's death who responds that his head just exploded out of nowhere. The police are curious about Danny's death and so the police starts to follow up Sandy everywhere. They believe she might have a connection with the alien. The following day, Sandy thanks Jules for what he did to save her life and also explains to her friends how the alien saved her from dying. Jules further repairs the spaceship. As the three are conversing, they then smell a dead cat and when the house starts smelling, the three of them see a dead cat outside. They then realize that all along, Jules was sending to them a signal of getting him dead cats which will help him fix his spaceship. And from the photo, Jules needed seven dead cats and after he has killed one, he needs six more dead cats. The hunt for dead cats begins. Milton first tries on calling her daughter Denise. The fact that Denise is a veterinary doctor, Milton expects her to give them some dead cats but she does not correspond. Milton and Sandy go looking for dead cats on the streets. While they're patrolled by a police car, the police have suspicions that Sandy has had contact with the alien. They manage to get some dead cats and, as they put them into their vehicle, a female policewoman spying on them says, what the fuck? They then end up getting only two cats. They're still remaining with four cats for Jules's spaceship to start working. Joyce also says she can toil around and find other cats. Joyce successfully finds three dead cats and they are only remaining with one cat to finish the job. Meanwhile, the scene again shifts to the underground government FBI facility and this time they are listening to Denise's calls talking about his father with aliens. The FBI agents then go to Milton's house direct and knock on the door but fortunately they are called for other work before they enter as Jules has also escaped to his spaceship. They then plan on the last remaining cat for Jules's spaceship to work. Joyce has a cat of her own, Henry, that is old, blind, and deaf. At first, Milton suggests they kill Joyce's cat, but she refuses the idea, but later, she realizes it would be best for the cat. Jules finally gets all the seven cats and heads to the spaceship. It's time for the magic to happen. All the seven cats are brought and Jules covers them with a silver sequin fabric that turns them into one fuel capsule. The fuel capsule turns on the spaceship and it's ready to leave. As the spaceship lights up an alarm in the underground government, FBI facility is triggered and FBI agents are then told to rush to the place and inspect. On saying goodbye to Jules, Joyce gives Jules a snow globe as a gift. Sandy also has a gift for Jules, which is a sweater. Milton also offers to Jules his identity card. Jules is about to leave, but he offers them a place on the spaceship. Milton decides he's going to go with Jules, because he doesn't want his daughter to see him get worse and worse every year. He then receives a call as Denise wants to come see him and not for the mental stuff but this time to stay with him as a normal dad for some time. As he is still on phone, the FBI agents arrive and they all have to run with Jules.
Pupils then stop somewhere for a moment as they think they have reached Jules' planet, but they are still on Earth, and Jules has just taken them to some place safe but still on Earth. Jules watches the three friends from a window in his spaceship as he proceeds to his home. We then see all the three friends after some time as they are still in grief, thinking about their friend Jules who left them and ascended to his planet. 